Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Uh, the term network uh, has taken on quite a, a meaning in the computer industry. It actually means kind of the same thing. It's uh, different uh, bodies, whatever, are able to participate with each other in a coordinated way. Now, there are two kinds of nets on ham radio. There are directed nets and there are informal nets. Let's talk about the informal first. This is where uh, people agree to a time and a frequency and they get on the air and they just talk to each other at random. You hear a lot of this on HF during the day, especially on 80 meters. Um, now the nets that you hear on uh, VHF, which you'll hear as a technician class ham, uh, tend to be directed nets. Now the thing about a directed net is that there is someone in charge and that is the net control. Uh, now the net control station is in charge period. Uh, you just let the net control person do what the net control person does. If the net control person wants to hand the net over to someone else, he or she may do so, but that's an only if they want to do that. This is the important thing about participating in a net. If you want to be part of the net, you need to do exactly what the net control station tells you to do. Usually what will happen is the net control station will ask for check-ins. So he'll get a list of all the people who've checked in and then he'll ask for uh, emergency or priority traffic. Um, and then once all of that has been taken care of and the formalities of the net have been taken care of, the net control operator will ask each of the check-ins one by one to participate by uh, giving a news update or asking a question or something like that. So the communication is between a ham, net control, another ham, net control, another ham, net control. Uh, so the net control is at the center of uh, everything that's going on. Now, particularly when we're talking about nets that come into being for emergency purposes, such as during search and rescue or uh, wildfire or something like that, or perhaps there's been an earthquake and ham radio operators are assisting the authorities and so on, it becomes critically important to do exactly what the net control station says to do. If the net control is talking to somebody else, it's not your turn. It doesn't matter what kind of traffic that you have. Usually in these situations the net control operator has received specific training. They know what they're doing. This is the best use of the frequency. Now I would just point out as an aside uh, when you are on an emergency net there are often people who are listening who are actively part of what's happening for search and rescue for example who are not hams and so therefore they don't know things like uh, QSL and uh, QTH and things like that so it's important for you to say yes I heard what you're saying uh, my location is uh, my call sign is I'm going to stop transmitting now rather than using the Q signals otherwise it tends to confuse these other people they don't know what they are and uh, it can take up extra time I might point out about emergency nets that uh, when we start getting involved with the local authorities in planning uh, that uh, there's a lot that goes on here and it's a good idea to get the training. Uh, the ARRL offers training your local uh, amateur radio emergency service or ARES coordinator can arrange training for you and so on. The fact of the matter is if you stumble into an emergency and you don't know what you're doing you can be a real hindrance to other people. It is best that you get a little training so you know what's going to happen uh, at the time. You really need to want to do this. Now I might point out that there's a lot of talk about ham radio and emergency communications. Uh, emergency communications is definitely a part of ham radio but ham radio is much much bigger than just emergency communications. There are many, many other things that you can do with your radios uh, that don't fall under the emergency communications rubric. 
Now in terms of finding nets, uh, there's some suggestions in the manual, but uh, frankly, word of mouth is usually the best way of doing it. There have been many attempts over the years at uh, providing lists of nets. Uh, they may or may not meet, they change their times, uh, circumstances come and go. Probably the best way to find them is either by listening or by word of mouth. Now a lot of the local clubs will have a net on VHF at a specific time. For example, our Montrose Amateur Radio Club here in Colorado has their weekly net at 7 p.m. local time on Sundays on uh, the repeater that uh, most of the people use. And a, it's a directed net, it's a great way to check in, see what's going on, get the latest news. Um, and then they move to HF after that and on 80 meters which brings in a different set of people who are not able to check in on uh, VHF. So find out where these nets are and participate. Now usually there's a net script of some kind for the directed net. So go ahead and talk to the people about uh, who are net control. Talk to them offline about maybe you taking a turn as net control. They can either assist you, they can give you the script and so on. Uh, when I was working with the Boulder Amateur Radio Club Junior Division or Bark Juniors uh, many years ago they had a weekly net also and they uh, passed around who was net control. They had a script. So here you have kids who are 12 or 14 years old running nets very efficiently because they're getting the training. One of the key things about checking into nets is it's a great way to make sure your equipment is still operating and get over mic fright, uh, learn how to do things on the air, what the rhythm is, what kinds of things people do, what kinds of things people don't do. So I do encourage you to participate. Now I will point out again that no one owns a given frequency. Now in the case of repeaters they can't move. They are where they are, but that's not true of nets. Uh, now in VHF, usually the nets are not so frequent that you're going to run into this problem, but on HF, uh, there can be nets that are worldwide in nature, regional in nature, and so on, and it is very easy for them to step on each other. Um, now, the etiquette is supposed to be that if someone else is using the frequency and you need to start your net, you can inquire politely if you may do that. Uh, you may end up moving a few kilohertz uh, to an open frequency to do that. So the people who follow your net need to know to tune around and uh, look for that. Uh, the key thing about getting on the air when there are lots of people, when there is some competition for the frequencies, is to remain calm, be gentlemanly, uh, be gracious, and remember, this is a hobby. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.